at the mall. Again? Yeah, well, at least this time when she dropped me off, she almost came to a complete stop. <laughs> what are you doing there? Cleaning the fridge. You throwing all that food away? No, no. Hey, Sandy, Tom. Oh, here you go, guys. <laughs> hey, Lewis. Lewis. <laughs> what was that about? Lewis wants to be called Lou from now on. Why? I've given up on asking Lou why he does what he does. Lewis! Lou? <laughs> yeah. What's going on, Lewis? Tom, <laughs> um, if Lou wants to shorten his name, we should respect that. All right, fine. Lou! <laughs> Sorry, I called you Lewis. Lewis. Oh, Lou is just as sensitive as Lewis was. Okay, all right, fine. Okay, you're right. Lou! Lewis! <laughs> all my life, just me. I thought that no one is around. I met you. Together in a crowd Now you're shaking me The world I see So different from my own But if you're there with me I thought you were going to do some writing tonight, Tom. I wasn't really in the mood. Or maybe I'll implement that policy down at the bank. I'd like to give you a loan, Mrs. Jennings, but I'm not really in the mood. <laughs> Hey, Dave, maybe you should implement that policy down at the buffet. <laughs> hey, hey mm -hmm. Mary and I both have some good news. Yes, we do. But I thought we agreed that I was going to tell them. Honey, I, I, I didn't tell them the good news. I only told them that we had good news. <laughs> okay, you're right. Why doesn't Chris tell us his news and then you can tell us yours? The issue is settled, Tom. Why do you have to pile on with your opinion? <laughs> I can't take this suspense. What's the good news? Well, at work, Chris had an idea for a greeting card, and he went to the writer's area and told them, and they're going to make it. <laughs> oh! Oh, wonderful! What's the card say? It says, Happy Birthday to You. <laughs> Spelled E-W-E. -E. <laughs> and inside, there's a picture of a sheep. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Val. Looks like now we have uh, two writers in the family. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you know, greeting cards and entire novel. <laughs> two peas in the pod. Unfunny joke aside, Tom, don't you think you're being a little bit presumptuous? How? When my mother said two writers, she was probably referring to Chris and me. I mean, I am writing my dissertation. Yes, and you have been since they invented paper. Well, unlike when you slap your silly little book together, I like to take the time to carefully choose the words that will have the most impact on the reader. You know what words have the most impact on the reader? The end. <laughs> Honey, why don't you... Why, why, why don't you ease the tension by telling everyone your good news? <laughs> That's a good idea. Tomorrow, the entire sociology department is having a get-together during which I'll be presented with my framed Teacher of the Month certificate. Oh, Ned. Oh, good for you. Oh. I don't recall you ever getting a framed certificate, Tom. Uh, no. I just got a truckload of cash. Okay. Okay. Well, I think we can all agree that Tom and Mary are both very good at what they do. Oh, it's a shame that Bill's out of town. He's missing all this. But I'll call him. And rates go down. <laughs> Dad, did you, uh, you want another help me? Oh, no, thanks. I don't have time. I have to get to a dinner meeting. <laughs> uh, well, uh, maybe I'll take some road snacks uh, uh, in case traffic's heavy on the I-35. <laughs> And this is the podium from which I shape all the young minds. 
except for that one foreign exchange student. He's like 35 or something. Why do I have to be here? I mean, your brother didn't have to come. Well, the invitation was addressed to Lewis, so he refused to open it. <laughs> I hope you're not uncomfortable, Tom. You know, being so out of your element. Why is this not my element? Well, there's no TV here. And most of the men in this room can grow beards. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't have missed you getting your little certificate for anything in the world. Oh, it's not little. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, the dean himself is going to be here to make the presentation. So I guess it's safe to say it's a pretty big thing. Oh, yes, it certainly is a big thing. Huge. <laughs> Speaking of big things, looks like the chairman of the paper department's here. <laughs> it's Professor Brown, a very respected scholar with a thyroid condition. <laughs> Well, like pyro, I can do. Stop it. <laughs> Professor Brown is a man of letters. And the letters are P-I-E. <laughs> uh, Mary. What are you doing, Dean Baker? Well, congratulations. Oh, thank you. I'm very honored. Well, I'd like to go ahead with the presentation. The anthropology department is having a little get-together at 8. And they're serving wine. Oh, well, first, you must meet my family. This is my mother, Sandy Kelly. Hi. And of course, you know my husband, Chris. Yes. My sister, Susan, and her husband. Hi. Tom, Tom. Oh, my brother-in-law, the author, I read your book. I enjoyed it very much. Oh, thank you. Hear that, Mary? Big, tall, smart guy like my book. <laughs> well, you must all be very proud. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, we are. <laughs> The symbolism. Uh, Dean Baker, I believe you said you're pressed for time. Oh, right. The wine. Uh, sorry to cut this short, but uh, you know what, Tom? I'd be thrilled if you'd be the speaker at the university's next open house. What do you say? Oh, uh, sure. Great. Um, but, sir, isn't that an honor usually reserved for the teacher of the month? Well, uh, yes, usually. Unless, of course, you've got a published author. <laughs> Uh, Tom, I'll have my secretary call you the details. You bet. Uh, excuse me? Um, but what about the presentation of my certificate? Oh, oh, right. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited about speaking at the open house. And I get to get feedback on my book and really connect with the readers. You're just doing it to annoy Mary, aren't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Honey, have some sympathy for her. Why should I have sympathy for her? She's always taking shots at me. I know, but she loves that schooling. Get off the bed! Get off! <laughs> is, there, is there a bug on me? No, hey, there's not a bug. You have your head on the pillow sham, and I asked you not to do that. I just don't get the point of the pillow shams. What's the point of a pillow you can't put your head on? <laughs> just get to it. Why are you still going to have a nice thing? I'm not if they're useful, but it's just so obvious that the pillow stands are a complete rip-off. <laughs> they call it a sham right there in the name. Well, I like them, so too bad. Now, when you get into bed, slide in carefully as to not untuck the sheets, please. <laughs> while I was reading your novel, I found myself laughing out loud at your observations of New York. Oh, no. and, and what a great title. Eight Million Stories. Well, you know, I was going to call it Green Eggs and Ham, but apparently someone already wrote that one. <laughs> Look at Dean Baker slurping all over Tom. You really think he's slurping? Oh, he's slurping. I still can't believe he invited Tom to speak here. I know it's hard having Tom invaded territory like this, but you shouldn't feel threatened. This is still your domain. Yes, it is. I rule multi-purpose room number 35. Yeah, that's my little tiger. You know, I actually kind of feel bad for Tom. I mean, this is an academy of higher learning. It's probably going to bomb up there. You brought your video camera, right? Yeah. Hey, way to go, Hemingway. Yeah. Very impressive turnout. Oh, thanks, Dave. Yeah, yeah, they went all out for you, I saw. 
And for cookies, a sweet cake, and a variety of wine. Listen, Tom, since you're obviously a big shot writer, uh, I've decided to give you first crack at this movie idea I've been working on. <laughs> oh, you know, Dave, I don't know. Really Elvis like... comes back to Earth in a spaceship. <laughs> Yes, Tom's the writer. I'm sure he has his own ideas of how Elvis will come back. Hey, Tom. Hey. Well? I'm, I'm just having trouble with the whole Lou thing. Looks like the name tag people are, too. Straighten those guns out. <laughs> what do you think shortening your name is going to accomplish? I mean, you're still going to be the same guy. Or am I? <laughs> I mean, they call it a sham right in the name. <laughs> All right, that's my time. Thank you, guys. Turn off the camera. They like him. <laughs> Thank you. Well, let's open up the floor to some questions. Uh, yeah. Is there any more of the cheap cake, or is that it? <laughs> I think that's it. Oh. Uh, will you be autographing copies of your book? Uh, sure, but only the ones in hardcover. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I can't believe they're falling for the crap. Was your book really on the New York Times bestseller list? Yes, it was. But wasn't Where's Waldo also on the New York Times bestseller list? Um, yes, I believe it was. But it was really hard to find. <laughs> Very witty. I have a question. Isn't it true that your real name is Thomas? But you go by Tom. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. I rest my case. <laughs> yes. How did you feel about Richard Gellis from the Winnipeg Gazette saying that he thought your book was, and I quote, totally lacking in charm? Well, he's welcome to his opinion. I was just happy I had a finished book for him to review. <laughs> well, at least I didn't call Professor Brown the chairman of the pastry department. I, I didn't. I, I, it, it was just a joke. Not so witty. Turn the camera back on. Well, it's just unfortunate that Tom had to be humiliated in front of everyone like that. Mary, you're the one who humiliated him. So, it can still be unfortunate. Maybe you should apologize to him. Why should I apologize to him? It's his own fault. He should never have come to my school and tried to look like a big shot. You play with intellectual fire, you're going to get burned. <laughs> now, don't start with Mary. Just let it go. I know, let it go. But I'm not the one who starts these things. Always Mary. I know, but just be the bigger person for me. Fine, I'll be the bigger person. Unless, of course, Professor Brown's in the room, in which case... Okay, <laughs> Hey, Tom. Hey. Hey, Sandy. Hey, Chris. Mary? Tom? <laughs> Mary? Okay. Tom, some people have informed me that they feel I may have crossed some sort of line, and apparently I'm supposed to apologize. So, there it is. <laughs> Actually, I'm not sure it was there. But uh, you don't need to apologize. Fine. Why is it fine? You were humiliated in front of all of those people. I can show you the tape. <laughs> Not necessarily. Just put it behind us and move on, okay? Okay. No, oh, that's nice. I don't do hugs. <laughs> Just so you know, Tom did apologize to Professor Brown. Yes, yeah, we talked for a while, we straightened everything out. Good. In fact, he asked me if I wanted to teach a writing seminar in the spring. He what? <laughs> oh, isn't that great? Well, looks like now we have two professors in the family. <laughs> oh, jeez. You are not qualified to teach a class. Oh, Mary, I, I don't think that they would have asked me to do it if he wasn't qualified. So now you're on Tom's side, too? Hey, you guys keep it down. It's not a lot of Mary, there aren't any sides. It's not a competition. 
What is a kumquat? What is a kumquat? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, all right, that's 400 bucks for Lou. <laughs> Lewis would have never gotten that. <laughs> One of two African nations for which Portuguese is the official language. What is Mozambique? I knew that. Trinidad. What is St. Petersburg? St. Petersburg. Way to go, man. Well, I'm just going to sit here and do that. Who is John Steinbeck? Who is Mark Twain? Who is Mark Twain? Right. <laughs> I'll keep score. Right after we learn a little bit about our contestants. Okay, we're back from commercial break. Here comes Final Jeopardy. On his deathbed in 1324, he reportedly said, I have not told half of what I saw. 30 seconds. Good luck. I don't like that stinking music. I got my own. Come <laughs> on, right, honey, you can do it. Who do you think's gonna win? I'm rooting for the computer programmer from Orlando. <laughs> okay, here we go. Did you come up with the correct response here? Who is Marco Polo? Yes, you did. Who is Marco Polo? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Tom's the winner. Yeah, there you go. New York Times best-selling author, globe-trotting guest lecturer, and now Jeopardy champ, huh, Mary? Who is the smart one now? Who's this? You are. Hey, you want to... I guess no one's in the mood for the wheel. So you can see what Van is wearing. <laughs> Our genealogy, ethnogenealogy, and my favorite, our dream of genealogy. <laughs> See you next week. Associate Professor Kelly? Yes, Andrew. Uh, the midterm's coming up, and I'm still a little confused about sociogenesis. Okay. Sociogenesis is the origin of social behavior that is based on past experience. Right. For example, you're being nervous about the midterm, your social behavior may be a result of your past experience with how difficult but fair my test can be. Okay, well, I get that. So, the midterm's going to be difficult? Oh, I think you're going to be fine. Thanks, Associate Professor Kelly. You're welcome. <laughs> Mary? What are you doing here? Oh, don't tell me. They're presenting you with the golden key to the teacher's lounge. <laughs> well, I came here to apologize. I was way out of line to say and shout and dance that I was smarter than you. But you are. You wrote a book and you beat me at Jeopardy. It's a game show. Come, Tic Tac Joe is just a game show. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. Well, it means something to me. Being smart was always my thing. Then you came to my school and everybody was slurping all over you. Slurping? It's a British term. I watch TV. You see? I watch the Cartoon Network, so you are the smart one. And the Jeopardy thing, I just got lucky. We both know that's not true. What is true is that we're both smart in different ways. But your smartness is more important than my smartness. It is? Yeah. Elaborate. Your smartness makes other people smart. Now, you're a great teacher. I just saw it. Yeah, well, you know what they say. Those who can't do teach. Oh, come on, Mary. You can both do and teach. I mean, you, you inspire people. You know, you make them understand. But I can write. I can't even teach someone how to write. But you're going to. No, I'm not. I turned it down. You heard my speech at the open house. Nobody learned anything from that. Because my smartness is more like smart ass <laughs> Well, that's true. Thanks for coming down. No problem. I'll see you later. Associate Professor Kelly. Don't make them call me that. Excuse me. Huh? I never told you, but I really like your book. Thanks. So you want to go get a beer? Not really. Good. <laughs> hey, 
it go. Hey, Lou. Actually, Lou didn't work out as well as I'd hoped. I got a few new names I'm considering. May I can run them by you? Sure. Okay. I was thinking either Louis, <laughs> L. Dowd, double G, okay, or Tarantula Jones. Tarantula Jones? Yeah, I'm an entomology major. Oh, well, I mean, all, all your choices are... I'm just kidding, it's back to Lewis. Oh, good. See you later. Yep. See you later, Lou. <laughs> we'll see you later, Tom. <laughs> oh, wait, that is his name. Don't go away. A brand new Hope and Faith starts right now on ABC.